They can be tiny, or they can be larger than life. But one thing these replicas have in common? They look just like the real thing. Here is the fascinating world of models, just like our own. Where can you see the Eiffel Tower, Mont Saint-Michel and the Arc de Triomphe, all within a few steps of each other? France, of course. Well, miniature France. Located two hours outside of Paris, Miniature France is a theme park made in the image of real France, but at 1 30th of the original size. The park is 12 acres in size and features 117 different monuments. Miniature France was built by a team of 50 model makers and landscape architects, ensuring that each model is an exact replica of its larger counterpart. To make this hybrid city come to life, there are animated trains, cars and planes that move around the region. And while you might not have time to see all the real France has to offer in one day, you can make your way around this park in one afternoon. Although your photos might not be to scale. Танки, естественно, не настоящие, поэтому и вооружение у них тоже внешне похоже на оригинал, но это охлощенное оружие, которое стреляет холостыми патронами. Меня зовут Сергей Акимов, я архитектор, строитель. Мы с друзьями занимаемся созданием ходовых моделей танков в масштабе один канал. Deep in the suburbs of Moscow, in a town called Novoselki, Sergei and his comrades tirelessly work on a pretty unique hobby. Through years of experimenting and prototyping, they've taught themselves how to build life-size tanks out of a garage, all in the name of celebrating Russian history. We have four people, соответственно, I, my son, my brother Yuri, my brother Sergei. This activity we chose spontaneously. Хотели отметить годовщину 9 мая. Для нас это очень серьезная дата. И мы хотели в нашем поселке проехать на танке своим таким импровизированным мини-парадом. Я озвучил идею, что теперь мы готовы создать танк. Потом сразу спохватился и понял, что это слишком сложная задача. Но преодоление трудности делает эту работу такой увлекательной. Огромное количество испытаний, огромное количество ошибок. Мы не вешали нос, шли вперед. Через 8 месяцев у нас появился МС-1. МС-1 – это первый советский серийный танк. Следующим этапом у нас машины на базе танца «Компваген-1». Сейчас у нас в планах две машины. Это убийцы танков, так называемый панцер Ягер 1 и самоходная артиллерийская установка «Бизон». Конечно, есть огромное количество скептиков, которые периодически появляются на разных фестивалях с глупыми вопросами, а зачем мы это делаем, что мы хотим показать. То есть в любом случае, когда ты говоришь о том, что ты делаешь танки, это не остается незамеченным. Конечно, очень интересно, когда эта машина оживает. Можно показать нашим детям, как выглядели эти машины много-много лет тому назад. Как они двигаются, как работают у них подвеска, как грохочет гусеница. То есть это как машина времени. Через труд, через любовь к технике ребят привлекаем к патриотическому настрою. A lot of the work is quite repetitive. The pleats took about two months to do. Probably did those eyes 10 times. Even the texture of the skin, 
their graceful dancing, which I wanted to portray. That's the whole goal, is to make them feel like they're gonna swim away. I'm Steven Kessler, also known as Tusk. I'm a large-scale wildlife sculptor. I found sculpture a little later in life, in my late 30s. Moving from one career to the other, especially into the art world, that's totally scary and foolish thing to do. I don't think I had an option after I started sculpting. I think my life was going to be it no matter what I did. Sculpture as a whole has inspired me. I mean, it's a 24 hour thing for me. Sleep just gets in the way, almost. When I'm out doing day-to-day -day things, not being here, it's always running through my head. I don't know if I'd personally call myself a daydreamer, but I could probably be labeled one. There is definitely a calming with clay. I usually work 12 hours for three days straight. Being able to realize what I want in it quickly, it just seems like it works together with how I process. I've been involved with making three life-size giraffes, 40-foot whale shark, four manta rays, and we're working on this 30-foot iguana behind me. The humpback whales took roughly nine months. The inspiration to do these pieces for the aquarium was because Utah is a landlocked state. There's a limited number of people that you see these in real life anyways. To be able to be in the same room, feel the size of it, hopefully there's an energy to it and hopefully inspire conservation acts because of it. If someone says, oh, I can't sculpt this, have you tried? Buy it, you know, you never know what's gonna happen. Open the box of clay, see what's in it, you know, there might be a humpback whale in the future. Aleppo Citadel, the ancient city of Palmyra, and the Norius of Hama, all ancient heritage sites, and all destroyed in the Syrian war. It's a loss not only to Syrians, but to the entire world. And these refugee artists are finding their own way to rebuild what has been lost. <laughs> عندنا نفس الرؤية ونفس الروح يعني ونفس أساليب المعالجة منتفق كل مدة على مشروع They have been using found materials such as wood, clay and even kebab skewers to make scale models of these historical landmarks واشتغلت على الأساس على الصور ما في أي قياسات ما في أي شيء their work is a way to preserve Syrian history and educate the world about the conflict. أكثر من رسالة لا للعالم إنه لازم توقف الحرب سورية لأنه حرام إنه الحضارة القديمة إنه تدمر بسهولة هاي ويجب المحافظة عليها. أثار ما أهل العلاقة بأي شيء يعني كانت دل دليل على حضارة سابقة. The artists say that by making this work, they are drawing attention and giving what they can to the people of Syria. يعني هاي الخدمة اللي بنقدر نقدمها لسوريا بالوقت الحالي. يعني أكثر من هيك ما يعني إحنا موجودين 
بلد ثاني وهاي المهمه اللي احنا بنقدر نعمل فيها